Do you want to say hi? <laughs> Why don't you love me? Should we just jump in, Riley? She's drinking out of the sink. Okay. So, in today's video, I want to go over what I believe are marathon essentials and any advice and tips I have for you as you begin your training for your very first marathon. What? Congratulations! 0.5 of 1% of Americans have run a marathon. Now, I tried to find the statistic for the world. I couldn't find that one. But less than a percent of people have run a marathon and you have decided to embark on this journey. And if you haven't and you're just watching this video because you're curious, hopefully I convince you by the end of this video. Let's start off with the running essentials. Number one, you need the right pair of running shoes. Now, what do I mean by the right pair of running shoes? The most important thing when picking a running shoe is to make sure that it fits your foot properly and it feels comfortable with your regular stride. Now one of the best ways to do this I have found is to go to any local running store or in your area because most likely these running stores are owned or operated by actual runners. They'll be able to properly tell how your foot is hitting the ground, what angles, what kind of pronation your foot has, all of that good stuff so they can help you pick the best brand for your foot. because. Different kinds of running brands are better for different kinds of running strides and different kinds of running patterns. So, yeah. Number two is body balm. Currently, I have no idea where I put that. So, insert picture of body balm here. If you're like me and your thighs are best friends and they cannot stand to be apart from each other, then body balm will be your best friend. It just glides on and it just helps that chafing, it helps that redness, it, no irritation. Literally saves my life every time I go on any run that's longer than 10 miles. Number three is a GPS running watch or a running app on your phone. I've had this, my Garmin GPS running watch for, I want to say like four years now. I don't have to whip it out like my phone on my runs and be like, oh, well, how many miles, how many miles have I run? Let me unlock my phone. I can't, it's, my hands are so sweaty. I can't unlock my phone. Nope, I just gotta, la 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 la. Oh, five miles, la 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 la. Number four is a hat. I feel like a hat is almost a must when you have to protect your beautiful skin from the harsh rays of the sun. I recommend getting a bright hat or with a reflective surface, that way you stay safe. Some of you crazy overachievers, you probably get up early in the morning and you go for your runs or you go on your runs at dusk when it starts to get dark. So I would recommend a reflective hat like one of these. That way cars see you, bikes see you, squirrels see you, horses see you, deer see you, everyone sees you so you don't get hit. Also, if you're running at night or in the early morning, you need to get yourself some pepper spray. Can never be too safe out there. Along with a hat, I would recommend running socks. These are not made out of 100% cotton. They're made out of other material, which helps to prevent blisters on your feet, which is so, so important because we're not trying to be down for the count at any point in our training. We can't be having our feet all blistery everywhere. Number five on my list is my pride and joy, my camelback. Trying to drink a cup of water on a run is an Olympic sport. You know what I look like when I try to drink a cup of water while I'm moving? Just, it gets everywhere but inside of my mouth. So instead of having to go through all of that trouble, I just take a sip of my camelback every time I run past the water station. And now you might be asking yourself, Courtney, why don't you just stop and then drink the water and then start running again because if I stop I'm afraid that I will never start again number six on the list energy gels our bodies need so much fuel to run a marathon and our bodies use two primary sources to feed our muscles while we are running and those are fats and carbohydrates Fats, however, are broken down way slower than carbohydrates, so they're not a realistic source of fuel during our marathon. So our body relies primarily on carbohydrates to fuel us during our actual race. 
However, our body can only store a limited amount of carbohydrates in our body at a time, so energy gels are used to replenish those carbohydrates during our actual run. These are definitely not necessary to use during your actual run, but I just find that it really, really helps me to have this quick boost and I just shoot one of these back with some of my water. 10 minutes later, I feel restored. I feel like I have more energy. I feel like I'm just like hyper, I'm excited again. And again, that might half be in my head and half be the energy gel, but still, nonetheless, I'm replenishing my carbohydrates while I run and I find that these are very, very helpful. Now. Let's move on to all of my tips and advice that I have for you during your marathon preparation. Pick a training plan and tailor it to yourself. I pick my training plan by literally going online, typing into Google. Let's say my marathon is in six months. I will type in six month marathon training plan and then hundreds, hundreds of training plans will pop up. You just, you gotta do a little work, you gotta sort through some, see which one you think that you can fit into your lifestyle the best. So once I pick the basic template, I will go through and then I will adjust it accordingly. So maybe I don't wanna do this run on this Monday, but I can do it on this Tuesday. I like to go to the gym on Mondays, something like that. My second tip goes kind of along with the first tip and that is schedule in lifting days. I cannot stress enough to you how important I think it is to keep up your lifting routine while you train for the, your marathon. Bottom line, I just had more muscle this time around than I did last time. And I could feel my muscle working, like I could feel myself stronger this time than I was last time. And I think that there is a lot of benefit to making sure you keep that muscle while you run this marathon because it's gonna help you. It's gonna help you through the whole thing. Tip number three I have for you is work your way up to the marathon. Maybe that you've decided you definitely wanna run a marathon, but you're not sure where to start, you're not used to racing maybe, this is all a brand new world to you, let's take it one step at a time. How about you schedule a 5K race, and then maybe a 10K race, and then you work yourself up to the half marathon. I think that this just helps you with any pre-race jitters that you're gonna have, because now you're getting your body used to, one, running in the morning because these races are almost always in the morning. Number two, you're getting a feel and you're getting used to the environment of a race. You're kinda like, okay, I've been through this before. I'm ready for this. I can do it. Tip number four is practice running on different surfaces. Cement can be super, super hard on your joints and your knees, but when you can, jump out on the trail. Take a little trail run. Any surface, even the road, is a little easier on your knees. And now, when I say road, I don't mean like go run out on the freeway or anything. I just mean, you know, you got a you gotta empty road next to the sidewalk by your house or something. Maybe run on the edge of the road instead. Give your knees a little break. Tip number five, practice your long runs in the actual outfit and all the gear that you plan to run in on the day of your marathon. This will help you to make any adjustments you need to make to your outfit. Maybe the camelback is situated wrong, you gotta adjust it better. Maybe the shorts you plan on wearing aren't the most comfortable. It's so better to get that out of the way before the actual race. That way you're not stuck in that outfit for 26.2 miles and you're like, oh my God, I can't. Tip number six I have for you is to run on the days that you do not want to run on. There are gonna be days where you wake up and you're like, Just don't even say the word running around me because I can't today but you need to get that booty out the door and on the trail and on the road and you need to put the miles in. It is so easy to go out on a run when it's 75 degrees outside, the sun's up, it's nice, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's a beautiful day, but it's way harder to go out on those days when you don't want to, when it's raining, when you're sad, when you're tired, when you're just not having it today. Those are the days that you need to get out there the most. Tip number seven I have for you today is it's very important to accept that this might be a goal that you accomplish completely on your own. And that is okay. If you're not lucky enough to sucker in one of your best friends to run 26.2 miles with you, then that's okay, you're just like the rest of us. After a while, it's gonna be harder and harder to convince your roommate or to convince your friend to go out on a morning run with you at 6 a.m. One of the realest things that I ever realized during my marathon training is that the farther you run, the lonelier it gets. And the more you're going to need to be the source of your own self-discipline and motivation. But it's okay, because I believe in you. You can do it. So those are my words of advice and those are my marathon running essentials. <sighs> you know, 
No one runs a marathon because it feels good. You don't wake up one day and think, you know it would feel really good on my knees today. 26.2 miles. It isn't going to be easy. There are going to be so many days where you wake up and you're thinking, why in the heck am I doing this? And you'll want to give up. And the truth is, so many people before you have. But you're just going to have to ask yourself, how great do I want to be today? Because once you cross that finish line, you forget about the pain in your legs. You forget about how you almost gave up on mile 18 and almost threw up on mile 22. And all that's left is your victory. And all that you have accomplished finishing this race, after you cross the finish line, you're going to feel invincible. So with that said, I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope you have a beautiful week. And congratulations if you've decided to join the running fam and to run any length of run that you're thinking of running. I believe in you and I can't wait to see you thrive. I hope you all enjoyed this video today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and this advice, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And let's not forget about that bell. Make sure you hit the bell. That way you are notified when I post a new video and you can watch it if you want to watch it. <laughs> if you have any questions or anything, you can shoot me a question in my DMs on Instagram or you can comment below. I will respond. So yeah, and I'll see you next time.